what's going on everybody um, today I want to do a video of a something I like doing but not a lot of people know how to do it or want to do it but a lot of people want to know how so I figured I'd make like a video on my next one um, this is gonna be like the most basic kind of budget-friendly portable radio cooler that I've ever built um, this one's a little over a hundred bucks uh, and it's you can either use a auxiliary input or um, sorry I got so much stuff going on here on this particular one that I'm gonna show you how to build you either got Bluetooth or an auxiliary input you know one of those your standard headphone jack style 3.5 millimeter or whatever um, this cooler I suggest shopping around for this is one of the most popular ones for this little build a lot of people do this particular build but uh, I'm doing this as an extension of my big cooler that's on wheels. This is going to wirelessly get audio from that one and be kind of like a satellite cooler, I guess, so to speak. You know, it can be away from it playing the same audio. But uh, the way I'm going to show you is just a basic Bluetooth build because that's all I'm doing. So just a couple components you need. Um, obviously, you need the cooler. That's kind of whatever you want prefer you know whatever you prefer you can do bigger coolers there's not really many smaller than this I mean this thing is tiny um, you see compared to my iPhone here it's not big at all but uh I got this I was looking online I was gonna build this a while ago and this one was about 20 bucks give or take online and then recently when I went to go buy it to build it they jacked it up to like almost thirty dollars and I would have had to pay shipping too so it would have been over thirty bucks for this little tiny cooler um, I google searched a little bit couldn't really find much then I found Big Lots had it for twenty so I was going to Big Lots and I had stopped at Walgreens and I found it at Walgreens for like thirteen or fourteen bucks on clearance and they had quite a few so search around like I said, I'm going for budget on this one, but still good quality. You can definitely do this cheaper. I got, this is not like a premium amp by any means, you know, it's Pile. Pile is not the greatest. But this is a lot higher end than some of the cheaper ones you can get. Uh, I paid like 50 bucks for this one. I got like a scratch and dent. Um, the ad said there was some marks on the top. I don't see anything. Like, aside from that little... No, that's just a sticker, so... Yeah, I mean, I really don't see any marks on this, but I pay, I got this one for, like, 12 bucks cheaper. I think normally they were... Uh, God, I want to say 50-ish, and I got this one for 40-ish, something like that. Don't quote me on these prices, but altogether, I'm in this thing about 130 bucks. And with this battery, it should theoretically play for 7 or 8 hours on really high volume. Um, give or take, you know, obviously depending on your music, how fast you're changing songs, stuff like that. Um, but anyways, a cheaper variant you could do is one of the little Lepai amps. It's like L-E-P-A-I or something like that. Um, you can get those for like 20 or 30 bucks, but those are really, really, really shitty. I'm going to be bluntly honest with you. That's why I didn't go for that. Plus, with this one, I've got an external volume. Got this right here that'll flush mount. And that's my volume control, so I can put that out here or, you know, up in this uh, cavity right here, you know, so it's protected from the water or whatever. And it's got the, uh, you know, external input as well. So that's two big things that sold me on this, aside from the wattage as well. This is obviously a lot more power. It's not a lot of power. I think it's rated at, like... 600 watts or something like that and we all know that's not pushing anywhere near 600 I would be surprised if it was anywhere near 50 watts RMS per channel but uh so this one you got your uh, your volume knob plugs in there you got an input for each channel which I don't like I wish it was only like two RCAs because now I'm gonna have to get a splitter but I'll go into that later take this little rubber cover off that's just you know protects it keeps the water out You've got your gain, you've got your polarity, if you got your speakers wired in reverse or something like that, and then your input level, you can change these to speaker level or RCA inputs, because speaker level is a lot more powerful and it needs to 
adjust for that basically. So you just press those, it shows you what they are. Hopefully you can see these. But uh, throw that back on there, you know, that keeps the water out. This amp isn't like submergible or anything like that, but you know, if you splash it or get some water on it, it's, I mean, according to its ratings, it shouldn't hurt it. Mine's gonna be in the cooler, so I'm not worried about it getting wet, but uh, over here you got your power, this goes to your battery. You got your ground that goes to your battery and then you've got the blue remote wire which just is another power but you just that's your switch wire you add the switch there and then that's what turns the amp on and off and then over here you got your speaker outputs you got your fronts your rears uh, like I said this is your volume knob it's got screw holes as well as uh, sticky tape so it'll be a real secure fit that's your auxiliary input it was really stupid design in my opinion with the four RCAs. Um, and then, but let me go over the other stuff you need. So you need the cooler. You need the amp. That's, you know, your choice. You can get this amp as well with Bluetooth. I have a Bluetooth receiver that I got for free that I wasn't using. So that's, you know, anywhere from 10 to like 30 bucks. You kind of get what you pay for with these. This one's about 20 bucks, give or take, but that's good quality. So I got that for free, but uh, the battery, I'm using a 8 amp hour, it's 12 volt 8 AH, that's amp hour. Um, the higher that number, the longer your play time. I wanted to keep this one portable, this battery is pretty light, like it, it's heavy, but it's reasonable, you know, it's not like a 35 amp hour, that thing's like a brick. So a uh, 12 volt 8 amp hour, this should get me 7 to 8 hours of play at full volume. Um, you can do a bigger one, you can do a smaller one, you know, if you want something that goes for two or three hours, you can get like a five amp hour, which is half the size of this, and it wouldn't weigh anything, so, again, it would be cheaper, that's all you though. Um, I paid like 18 bucks for that. Cooler was like 13, their amp was like 40-ish. And these speakers, 150 watts, again, we know they're not actually 150 watts, it's a pile. They're probably 30 or 40 watts tops, but uh, they're six and a half inch round speakers. Um, these are completely waterproof. So theoretically, if I seal this in good enough, I could dip it in the water and it's still gonna be working. Not gonna do that, but I am gonna be out on the water with this one. So I'm gonna put like a bead of silicone, you know, around each speaker before I put it in. So it's completely sealed off. Um, it's got a built-in grill, so you're not going to be able to change that grill out, you know, if you don't like it. I'm not a fan of it, but I like the black better than the white ones. Even though the top of the cooler is white, I just like the darker color. Uh, from Rain Use, blah, blah, blah. Polypropylene cone with cloth surround. That's why I say they're not fully waterproof, because the cloth gets wet, it's really going to degrade it. But, uh, 150 watt peak, there are 4 ohms, and these are only 1.5 inches deep. So, they're you know, pretty thin, pretty shallow. These are the PLM R60Bs. And these are 20 bucks a pair. They've got white ones, they've got black ones, and they've got like three or four different sizes, like uh, wattage sizes. They got like 50 watts, 75 watts, 150 watts, 200 watts, something like that. Um, some people just do, you know, one set of speakers and of course you can get the smaller amp which is like 20 or 30 bucks for the pile one like this but only a two channel um and then one set of speakers so that knocks you know 40 bucks off right there but i want 360 degree sound i'll show you what these speakers look like uh, one of my main tools that's not a knife over here They're actually pretty good looking speakers, the pictures are just ugly. And that's definitely deeper than an inch and a half. That's probably three inches at least, I'd say. But uh, it's pretty decent weight. And that doesn't look like cloth in there. Yeah, that's not cloth at all. So, I don't know what the hell they're doing. These are not cloth, so these actually should be waterproof because that looks like it's rubber and then that's like polypropylene or whatever. So yeah, good job, pile. Um, secret tweeter. 
it's actually not a tweeter it doesn't look like or it might be I'm not sure if that's a tweeter if that's just me seeing through into the middle of the cone but uh yeah that's probably not a tweeter it doesn't say two-way or anything like that either way though I've read some reviews people either love them or hate them most people who hate them were looking for like $60 speaker quality out of a $20 pair of speakers so that's their own fault like you are not going to get audiophile quality out of this thing but uh it's going to do everything I need it to do and hopefully everything you need it so now we got the easy part of the video over you got your cooler speakers your power your amplifier and you can also do not do an amplifier and do like a little car stereo they make the uh, mechless decks now they're called like media receivers and it's a normal size stereo but instead of being like seven or eight inches long it's only like three or four inches deep because there's no CD player it's just Bluetooth you got AM FM Bluetooth usually USB auxiliary input so that would actually give you more features than this you could add a small antenna and then have like FM radio and stuff like that but uh, that's again way more stuff than I needed so and not many of them are actually like waterproof without paying a premium so that's why I went for this hand so basically you got your inside of the cooler and this one is not going to be a wet build meaning this cooler is no longer going to be a cooler this is going to have electronics in it no room for beer and ice I mean I wouldn't want to try to squeeze stuff in here and then be able to put beer and ice in there because you have room for like a couple cans and that's pointless in my opinion. So basically you're going to have your battery, you're going to have, I'll probably do the amp like up here just in case it ever does get water in it or something like that, the amp's up at the top. I have to get like some wire loom and clean it up, that'll fit perfectly like that. Um, and then I'm thinking that the volume will be right here. I'll probably do this input like on the side. That way you can plug your cord in and then like leave your phone in here. So maybe I'll do something like that. Um, so it's just got like a big nut. You just drill a hole and put it through. But uh, one big thing too, like map everything out. Don't just start cutting stuff and then just assume it's gonna fit because chances are you will run into problems somewhere. I've built like five of these things so far. I free ball a lot of them, but uh, you know, I've learned my lesson, so take my advice. Um, tool wise, you're gonna need some basic tools. Um, I've got a Dremel. I prefer to make my cuts with a jigsaw, you know, a little handheld jigsaw, but I cannot find mine because a jigsaw will cut through this stuff like butter. It's really easy, just, you know, draw out your circles. Um, I'm probably going to use a jigsaw though, same thing, or, I'm sorry, a Dremel. Um, you know, drill for, drill for your holes. Uh, maybe a vise, you know, get rid of like burrs and stuff like that, smooth out your circle, or a vise. Wow, I cannot talk to that, I apologize. A, uh, a file, so if you like get some jagged edges, you can smooth them out. Um, you need some wire. Uh, you might not actually need wire, I mean, depending on how close you put your stuff to the battery. But, uh, you know, like I said, I was show, I plan on putting it a little bit farther away. Need some wire cutters and uh, strippers. These save so much time. I got these at Harbor Freight for like five bucks. Look at that. Perfect strip. I love these things. Um, some connectors, too. You're going to need, like, the female little spade connectors. I'm not sure exactly what they're called. But these are going to go on your battery because you got these little terminals so these go on there like that and they just kind of they're really firm they're not going to come back off. Um, I've seen people solder onto these which you could do as well but I'm not really interested in having a soldering iron right near this plastic. Um, so you know you got your various wiring connectors. Some sort of like uh, wire cutters, pliers type deals. Little zip ties, these will make your build look so much cleaner. You don't want wires going all over. 
Um, drill bit, you know, of course, to drill your holes. Um, that's really it. But, uh, yeah, that's really it, though, I can think of. Of course, you can solder all your connections. I do recommend soldering, but let's be real, you do not have to. Um, I just want to build this one as nice as I can because I do plan on selling this. So, good quality means repeat customers. Word of mouth means more customers. So, I'm not trying to skip out. But, uh, heat shrink is another thing that I do not have, unfortunately. Um, I think that's about it. So, I'm going to take some pictures and some more videos here and there. But, I'm going to go ahead and get started right now. So I will see you in a split second after I've done a lot of stuff. Okay, so it's been a long ass time now. Um, my camera light died, so bear with me here if it's kind of hard to see. I got the speakers cut out, screwed in, I, uh, silicone around each hole. That was ridiculous because this stuff was worn out, so I had to cut it huge, so that took twice as long. Um, I'm not a huge fan of this cooler, I'm not going to lie. These little like indents and stuff made cutting a simple circle ten times more work. But uh, it is very possible. I was kind of rushing, so you know it didn't come out the best. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to kind of like fill it in once the silicone dries. Just get like some hot glue or something that will get somewhat stiff. And then I'm just going to color it to match and you really won't notice, you know, because I'll kind of I'll shape it the same. So, uh, and a lot of times you're going to be looking down at this cooler and that's going to hide most of my imperfections at least but uh so i got all four speakers in i hope you can see because i can't see my camera screen this battery fits perfectly like between these speakers like there goes the call good but it's in there kind of firm but i'm still gonna glue it down or get some kind of like industrial velcro um you could even put like a couple screws in there and like strap it down with like some little straps or something like that uh i would probably do velcro and the straps i would do just do two different methods just in case one fails you know just using hot glue alone is uh i wouldn't recommend that because it'll get warm in there you know you might leave this in the car or outside in the sun it gets hot inside that hot glue softens up your battery's gonna start rattling over all over it's not a big deal it's not gonna move around a lot but you know you just you don't want to keep fixing the thing when there's you know you could have just did it right the first time so do like two different methods you know strap it down and glue it or you know velcro and glue you know velcro and strap something like that i mean you could even like just put in like some kind of like piece of aluminum that's just like pressing down on the battery and then like screw it in either side so it's just you know the battery's not going to move uh, there's a lot of different stuff um but now that i got that done i got you know, each of the four speaker leads. Um, I got dust all over, or shavings, I guess I should say. But uh, there's definitely plenty of room if I wanted to like strap this to the battery or something like that, or even just kind of like set it in there. I could make like a small little bracket. But I think just to keep it lighter and easier, I'm gonna put it on the lid. And then I'll just get some wire loom. Um, yeah, but that's where I'm at so far, so I will make another clip when I get some more stuff done. Okay, so now I've got my amp mounted. i got the volume control mounted. You know, I'm going to clean this up, try to, you know, organize this all a little bit. I've got the speaker connections done. I'm going to electrical tape these and then zip tie them up. You know, have a real nice clean strand going up there. With a little bit extra slack in case I ever needed to move the amp or something, you know, I got room to work with. Um, it's always good to have extra because when you don't have enough and you got to do something, then just make it more work for yourself. But uh, now what I'm going to do is, oh, I'll show you this too. Got my volume switch mounted. Drilled the hole, ran the wire, uh, took the sticky backing off. You know, set it in there carefully straight, screwed it in. It's that simple. Um, I don't think what else. Uh, I took the battery back out so I can organize the wires a bit. Um, yeah, you know, I haven't done too much. Uh, 
So far, probably an hour and a half, maybe two hours into this, and I'm going slow. These speakers took me a while to cut. You know, I'm in no hurry. I want to, you know, make this one look good and clean. So I'm actually thinking right now that I'm not going to mount the uh, auxiliary port for one reason. Well, a couple reasons. One, I cannot find my hole saw adapter that would fit this small, and I don't have any kind of drill bits that would fit this small. Or drill bits, I guess, would be big. This would be a big drill bit. Um, there's that. And two, I don't plan on using an auxiliary input. I mean, you know, everything uses Bluetooth. Um, plus, if it's Bluetooth, you can control the volume by your phone wirelessly, so... Right now, I'm not going to do this, but, I mean, if you were to do this, literally just, you drill a hole big enough for this thing to fit through, take this plastic nut off, put the wires down the hole, put this in, put the plastic nut back up, and then tighten it up, and then you would just connect these to your inputs. It doesn't really matter, just white to white, red to red, you know, do it like that, and like that. Channel 1, 2, and 3, and 4 doesn't really, it's not going to make a difference because you got, you don't really have a front and a rear sound stage. You got, you know, front, back, and then like left and right. Um, i trying to think of any other thing that people might be curious about. I only use two screws for the amp. You don't have to put all four in. Um, that's it so far. Okay, so there's the battery. The battery fits like... There's no room between the battery and these speakers, so that worked out really good. Um, so far, it's not too heavy. It's still reasonable. Of course, i got to put the battery in there, but the battery is going to be the most weight, and even with that, it's still going to be... Honestly, I would... Because uh, we used this at the hotel yesterday. I had it full of ice and pop and bottles of water. Uh, probably like six, five, six bottles of water and four or five cans of pop and then ice... And then, you know, what ice melted, there was the water at the bottom. So, I would probably say it's lighter than that. You know, so lighter than this thing loaded up with drinks and ice. Which is perfectly fine by me. Okay, so I'm like three quarters of the way done with it now. Um, I found a drill bit that fits the switch. And I believe it'll fit this. Yeah, it'll be pretty much perfect. Um, so what I was going to do originally, I have this Bluetooth receiver that is powered by USB. It's not battery powered, so it needs constant power. I was going to run like a little cigarette lighter plug, but I don't have that. Quite frankly, at the moment, I don't feel like getting all that and adding all that because I'm not blown away by this thing as it is right now. Um, I did a little test run. Uh, powered it up. Got to get a different switch because the switch is like wired backwards. On is off and off is on. So that's annoying. But uh, another thing to save me hassle of having to buy like with this uh, Bluetooth thing. I would have to buy an RCA splitter and a 3.5 millimeter adapter to RCAs. So I would have like three foot of RCAs here to bundle up. And, you know, it, the, the, the mess would be huge, you know, I'd be leaving a huge footprint in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount this, you know, because this has the four RCAs in it. I'm going to mount this right here, kind of like match the switch, you know, be like a little bit behind right here. And then I've got this Bluetooth adapter, which is battery powered, and it lasts like 11 hours on a full charge. So this will outlast the cooler, so I'll never have to worry about this dying. Um... I'll probably end up selling this anyway, so they'll be like, hey, you know, 10, 20 bucks more, I'll give you Bluetooth, but uh, I think a lot of people would rather just do the input anyways. Not a lot of people mess with Bluetooth, I don't know why, but, so, that's what I'm doing right now. Uh, like I said, I did wire it up and test it. I'm not blown away by the sound, to be honest. These speakers, they, they're 20 bucks. They put out a lot of mid-range, but not a lot of low-end, and not a lot of treble so you just have this like really like I'm trying to think of the word to describe it. like it sounds like you got mid all the way up in our EQ with nothing else and it's just it bugs me um, I'm somewhat of an audiophile I was expecting a little bit better out of these speakers but uh, oh well 
you know, they were 20 bucks a pair. Um, this is kind of like my first one anyways, like my first mini build, so next time I'll definitely... The one I plan on keeping, basically, what I'm trying to say, I guess, is, you know, I'm going to go all out. I'm going to spend a lot more money on it, probably 200 bucks. I'm going to buy, like, a bigger amp, um, you know, stuff like that, so it'll be a little bit different. But this is a really good build for the average person. This is not hard to do. It's really cheap. It's still going to be awesome whether you're out at the beach or at the pool or anything like that. It's just me personally. I'm used to my big cooler that's got four 6x9s and a 1200 watt amp that's actually pushing over 100 watts RMS to each channel with a whole lot of airspace. You know, that thing sounds like a concert, you know. So I think that's that kind of had my standards set too high. But uh, this thing does sound good. It's just you're going to have to tweak your EQ, you know, playing just raw music with no EQ. It's not going to be that hot, but uh, I'm not going to complain about it because for what it is, it's really awesome. So I'll definitely post another video. Well, not post another video, but I'll be back in a minute with it, with it being done. Show you everything in detail. So already. Okay, so it is finally done. Um, pretty much done. Done with what I want to do for now. Um, I do want to add a cigarette lighter on the inside like a you know a plug so you can charge your devices and stuff like that but I'll do that next couple days or something but uh okay so there we go I'm gonna show you the cooler itself it's dusty right now I got dust all over I haven't cleaned up yet you see the cuts aren't perfect but it does the job It's not heavy. It's with everything in here. It's lighter than it was when I just used it with, you know, being full of uh, like pop and ice and stuff like that. It's lighter than that, so it's not hard. It's not heavy. It's not hard to hold. Uh, I don't really think you get tired if you're carrying it around and stuff. But uh, let's start from the top. Got this little like dry bin here. My phone's kind of too big to fit in there, but it will fit that way. Um, it would not fit if I were to plug it in. Obviously the plug would be hanging out. But uh, with the Bluetooth, it would. This is one of the Bluetooth modules I'm using. This one's battery powered. And, uh, you know, it runs by itself, not off the cooler. So I could throw that in there with the auxiliary cable plugged in. Still put my phone in and close it. Or, you know, if you had a normal size phone, not, you know, a five inch or five and a half inch phone or whatever, you'd be able to fit it in there with a plug. But, uh, anyway, so you got your power. Right now I got to get a new switch because this switch is backwards. Uh, it was a cheap bunch I ordered on Amazon a long time ago. Half of them worked, half of them didn't. Half of them were backwards like this. Like, this should be on. I didn't wire the LED up, but being like this should be on but this is actually off that's on uh, you got your volume right here this thing's really sensitive like you get most of your change like from there to there and then all this is like just a little bit I wish it was the other way around like you know low medium and then you know not be much right there but uh or be mostly right there whatever got your auxiliary input like I said, don't mind the dustiness right now. Then you open it up. You got the amp. Obviously, all the wiring. Uh, that's the power switch. You know, go from some positive to the amp turn on wire. Uh, that's the volume button. There's the back of the input. Got the 10 amp fuse. Please fuse this stuff because if anything happens, this little battery could cause a whole lot of damage. If some were to short out in here and I didn't see it, this thing will catch on fire and burn my whole house down. Or, you know, your car or wherever you are. But, uh, whoops. Must not have snapped that lid back on good. Go pick it up by the lid. Tilt it forward, you see there's really nothing in there. It's mostly just airspace for the speakers. 
Um, I gotta dust that out too, you know, there's little white specks in there of all this stuff. Um, the battery, that's all it moves right there, they're just that little bit. It's velcroed in, I'm sure you can hear that. Um, speaker wires come up there. This is going to be for the charging posts. I'm probably going to put like right here and here so you can just like clamp on a charger. This is going to be for the uh, cigarette lighter which would let me power this Bluetooth receiver which is a lot smaller. And this one will be hidden on the inside so you know it'll free up all that extra space in there. But for now we'll just keep those tucked away. Batteries uh, connected just with these little spade terminals right here. Um, you know everything closes nice. It's got a good seal. I'm gonna do a sound demo in another video for a couple reasons. One, I don't want any copyright problems, so I gotta find some not copyright music. Um, two, I'm in my house right now. You can hear my fan on. It's loud. It's a bad acoustic environment to try it. Um, and two, my girlfriend's upstairs sleeping, so I don't want to be down here blasting music. But uh, I'm very happy with this thing, I really am. Um, I was kind of disappointed at first, but I had my stand, I had my hopes up way too high. I was, if you zoom over to that cooler right there, that big monster, that thing got a hundred plus watts RMS going to each speaker and there's four six by nines which blows other stereos away you know what I mean like this is just four little cheap six and a half inch speakers they're one way so they're not gonna hit real crisp highs but it does the job most people probably wouldn't even know the difference but me I'm somewhat of an audiophile so that makes a big difference to me but uh, I hope you enjoyed hope this helps somebody you know answer some questions for you if you're doing a budget build this is the way to go you know just for two pairs of these $20 speakers you know 36 bucks I looked on uh, Amazon just to make sure 36 bucks for this amp um, I got like a you know like I said a scratch and dent even though the thing was brand new there's no marks on it um, this is the four channel version 36 bucks for that um, 39 bucks total for all four speakers 19 bucks for the battery and I bought this Which I will go into detail in another video about but this was like 14 So if you wanted to add Bluetooth you could kind of consider this being like Bluetooth Cooler itself was 14 bucks at Walgreens. So You know just shop around There's other coolers. I would recommend the uh I can't remember what it is, I think it's an igloo, but it's wider and a little bit taller, but not as deep, but uh, all sides are flat, so it would be extremely easy to put four speakers in that thing, and then you have a little bit more airspace. That's going to be my next one, and I'm going to go with some nicer speakers, maybe a little bit nicer of an amp, I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, that'll, that video will definitely be on here soon. Um, yeah, if you got any questions, uh, feel free to comment. I tried to go over everything in extreme detail. Um, I mean, except for building, obviously, it's a time lapse, but... You know, I'm trying to think of questions somebody might have. Uh, can't really think of any. You know, like I said, better speakers. If you spend a little bit more money on speakers, you're going to get a lot better sound. But this definitely does the job, so... If you're just looking for something to carry around to your kid's baseball game or whoops, carry around to a baseball game or down to the pool or to the beach or something, this is definitely going to do the job. And a lot of people get mad like, oh, see, it's stupid. It's not even a cooler anymore. You can't put drinks in there. So what? It's a $14 cooler. You could have four speakers in this damn thing. If you need another cooler for drinks, get another one. You know, 13 bucks, or go get a little foam one. And then there, boom, you got one for drinks, you got one with the stereo. You know, no phone speaker is going to compare to this. No Bluetooth speaker is going to give you the flexibility that this thing has. You know, you, you can buy a decent Bluetooth speaker anymore. 
um, like the Harman Kardon Onyx, Onyx, Onyx Studio, whatever it's called. Those sound great, but only when they're plugged in. You unplug it, you're lucky to get two or three hours of battery life at full volume. You're not going to get anywhere near the actual volume of this. You might get a little bit more bass out of that, but nowhere near the overall volume of this. This is 360 degree sound. There's a speaker going in every direction. Um, you know, you can plug stuff in that's not, because you know, not everything's Bluetooth. You might have an old school iPod you want to use. Boom, you get that. Another cool part is I didn't really show in the other video or the other clips. You get a wireless, or a, I'm sorry, not wireless, but a waterproof bag for your phone. So you can plug the plug that in, and then plug the other end in right there. So there's that too. You know, if you're down at the beach or whatever, you know, you want to play with your phone while it's in there. Again, my phone's a little bit too big for this, but uh, you know, I'll just give you ideas here. Um, plus that Harman Kardon uh, speaker is like a hundred and a little over a hundred bucks pretty much the same price you pay this I mean the only benefit is it's lighter and it might have a little bit more bass but you're not getting the volume you're not getting the 360 degree sound and with that bass comes distortion you're getting that bass that uses a lot of power some songs are going to have too much, you're going to have to constantly adjust your phone and stuff. Um, this one, when I'm completely done with it, you'll be able to charge your cell phone. Um, you know, Bluetooth will be built in. Just all kinds of stuff, you know. So, I mean, everything's at its pros and cons, so do your research and ask around. Um, but yeah, uh, thanks for watching. I hope, like I said, I hope it helps somebody. Uh, Go ahead and comment if you got any questions. I'd try to read them all. I definitely don't get to read them all, all the time. But uh, sometimes I'll respond right away. Sometimes it'll take a minute, but I try to. So, show you one more view. Let me unclip my camera here. Let's zoom out. Handle is removable too if you wanted to like screw in like a nice heavy duty strap or something like that. I'll probably end up doing that because this handle is kind of flimsy. I don't know if you can see right there. It has popped off on me. See how it kind of goes like that. Pull a little bit harder and it'll just pop right off. 